the first will be from John 16, verses 12 through 15. Uh, that is on page 876 of your Pew Bible, or 1678, depending on which Bible you have. The second reading will be Romans 5, 1 through 5, and that's on page 914, or 1752.
And so today is Trinity Sunday, and it's a celebration, like Father's Day is, of a relationship, the divine, intimate relationship within the being of God. Now, I read, um, I don't know if, if this is still common in Catholic households, but I read that uh, many times in the past, Catholic households would celebrate Trinity Sunday with things that were all um, related to three like uh, having tricolored pasta, or Neapolitan ice cream, or a tri-tip roast, or tres leches dessert, you know, anything. I, I liked the one here that was triple scoop brownie sundae with triangle-shaped brownies. That I could go for, I could make a new tradition. Uh, this post-Pentecost date for Trinity Sunday uh, is, is the final celebration of the church year after Christ's resurrection, Ascension and the descent of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And this term Trinity, or you could say triunity, is not a term that's in Scripture, but it became used in the second century to affirm biblical teaching about what we read that the Father sent the Son and the Son sent the Holy Spirit. And the Trinity describes an intimate relationship of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is a unique doctrine to us as Christians. It, it states that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are somehow distinct from one another but are completely unified in their will and their essence. It is not polytheism like other faith beliefs. It is monotheism, one God. And it's something that's difficult to explain. And in a, an article called Can You Explain the Trinity, uh, one of the statements said that God lives in our, in our universe without the, the, the limitations that we have. He is spirit, and so he's more complex than we, are, than we are, and so that's why Jesus the Son can be different from the Father and yet be the same, and yet be one with him. The Son is said to be eternally begotten of the Father, always the Son of the Father, while the Holy Spirit is said to proceed from the Father through the Son. There's an inner penetration of the three persons with distinct roles in creation and redemption. For instance, Colossians and Genesis tell us that God the Father created the world through the Son and that the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters at creation. All three were there. And I had us read the Romans passage in addition to the John passage. If you have that in front of you, it's on page 914 or 1752 in your, in your uh, pew Bibles. If you have that, I want to pull out a couple of phrases from that passage that describe the roles of the Trinity in our salvation. It says that we have peace with God, the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ in verse 1. In verse 2, it says the hope of the glory of God is ours. In verse 4, it says God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. All three persons of the Trinity involved in our salvation. This is not just a, a abstract theoretical doctrine. It's a relationship of a God who voluntarily operates within our created world. A loving God who became as we are in the Son uh, so that we could become like Him. This isn't just a philosophy or a, a speculation. It's about the heart of our salvation. God, the three in one, operates within this world in a loving, relational, intimate way. And so celebrating the Trinity shouldn't be primarily about understanding the theological doctrine as much as about celebrating God's love for his creation and his desire for relationship with us. I do want to go to scripture to help you uh, know how this, this term of the Trinity came to be. Because there isn't one place where you can go and say, God is three in one, is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's no place in scripture where you can go and see this delineated clearly. But uh, by the second century, century, they realized through the reading of scripture that you could not get away from the truth that God is one, Three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So in Genesis 1.26, God says, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. He says us and our. It's 
scriptural affirmation of one God, but a plurality. Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You know, God is one. In Matthew 3, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all present. In John 14, 9, Philip asks Jesus to show them the Father. And Jesus says, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? And in John 14, Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home. And then in Matthew 28, 19, the last words of Jesus before he ascended, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And there are many more passages that describe this. And so we have come to this term, Trinity. Now I taught fourth grade Sunday school several years ago, and there were a couple lessons that we did about the Trinity. And we try in our intelligence to figure out a way to describe the Trinity to people and to students. And so we use the illustration of water. Water can be liquid, it can be ice, it can be steam, but it's all water. Uh, the egg has a yolk and a white and a shell, but it's all <coughs> egg. Uh, the shamrock is a, is a huge, uh, hugely popular symbol because of the three leaves. But none of these illustrations really capture what the Trinity is. You see, it's a mystery. I read on a website that mystery is often seen as having a negative connotation, seen as something unsaid or undefined or something we humans cannot know. It's true our human minds can never fully grasp the entirety of this doctrine, but the mystery is knowing just enough to want to know and seek more. The mystery of faith should be a magnet that draws us farther and inspires us to delve deeper in our quest to know, love, and serve God. So why is, all, why is this even important? Well, first of all, the, the placement of Trinity Sunday after God sent Jesus Christ, he died and rose again, ascended to heaven, and we celebrated, as we did last week, the coming of the Holy Spirit. This placement on the church calendar prompts us to look back at the now completed mystery of salvation. God completed everything he said he was going to do. He had told his people Israel, one day I will put my laws in your heart. I will give you a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. And he did this by his son sending the Holy Spirit. Life in us. Second, celebrating Trinity Sunday should prompt us to understand and seek the relationship that God wants with us. Genesis tells us that we are made in the image of God which means that we are made to need and to experience the intimacy that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit experience. God wants us to experience the divine relationship of peace, harmony, unity, and goodness that is experienced within the person of God himself, the Trinity. The Trinity, the triune God, created a being, us, humans, so that he could share intimacy and belonging and fulfillment the way God knows it within the Trinity. You see, God is not just out there. He's right here, desiring to be within us and to give us pure, intimate, spiritual oneness with himself. Christianity is the only religion that offers that. And the persons of the Trinity wanted, they all wanted the same thing. They wanted a relationship with us. Perfect intimacy, harmony.
harmony, peace, comfort, and fellowship within the Trinity mirrors what God wants with his creation, you and me. It's all about relationship. That's what the Garden of Eden was all about. Walking with God in the evening, relationship, an intimate sharing, a perfect relationship, being known by God and belonging, God being a bosom friend, a kindred spirit. Our sin broke that fellowship. And the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work together in order to restore it. Peace with God, as the Romans passage says, peace with God through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ made real through God's love in us by the Holy Spirit so that we can share the glory, the essence, and the intimacy of relationship with God. Kyle Eidemann wrote a book called uh, Not a Fan. And he sets forth the statement that many of us are fans of God, fans of Jesus. And he says, fans often confuse their admiration for devotion. They mistake their knowledge of Jesus for intimacy with Jesus. And I think many people do that. We think, I gotta know more. And we equate knowing what the scripture says and knowing all the answers and knowing all of this with being a relationship and knowing isn't a relationship. I know a lot of things about Harrison Ford, who is one of my favorite actors, but I have no relationship with him. It's not the same. And Gordon Lester says, familiarity and intimacy are not the same. They each have value, but one is no substitute for the other. Intimacy must be deliberately sought. It must be opened up and responded to. Intimacy searches for deep understanding and personal appreciation. So let's go back to Anne Shirley and her lifelong desire to have a bosom friend, a kindred spirit, a relationship that was fulfilled with her, with her friend, Diana. A relationship where they knew what the other was thinking. They knew what the other would do. They knew what was inside. They could let down their guard with each other. They could share their inner world with each other and know that they were loved and accepted. And that's the relationship that God wants with you and with me. Intimacy is a journey of discovery in a relationship. Not just among us as people, but us with our God. And it's built up and it's deepened over time. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens by intention. And we can be emboldened in our quest because God has made it clear that he wants intimacy with us. Exodus 33, 11 tells us that God spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Proverbs 3.32 speaks of God being intimate with those who are righteous, meaning they're in a right relationship with him. John 14 tells us that God promises to reveal himself fully and intimately to those who obey him and that he will come and live with us and in us. We don't need to fear rejection, only to step in to the pure, perfect, intimate relationship with our creator God, who will always accept us completely and unconditionally. God knows us. He knows you. He knows me completely and intimately to the depth of our being, to the very inside part that we show to no one else. God knows that. And he desires to be our bosom friend. He said, I love you. I want you to belong to me. I know all that's there, and I want to know it. Father's Day is all about relationship. The Trinity is all about relationship. What is your relationship with your God like this morning? Is it a familiar relationship? Do you know a lot about God, like I know about Harrison Ford, or maybe you don't know much about God, like maybe you don't 
know much about some other famous person or anyone who lives down the street? Or is your relationship with God intimate? Like that with the person you are closest to on this earth? Will you choose to go deeper in relationship that is meant to fulfill you, to accept you, to bring you into a place of belonging with your Holy Father? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, evidenced by his Holy Spirit living in us in intimate relationship. That's what it's all about. That's what this book is all about. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you that you see everything that is in us and you love us anyway. Thank you that you went to whatever means was necessary in order to restore the relationship that we chose to break. And Father, we can be afraid of that intimacy, but remind us that we don't need to fear your love. Your love accepts us. Your love sent your son to die for people who rejected him. Even from the cross, him saying, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. I love them anyway, Father, you love them too. Father, we all need that. We search for it in so many places, in human relationships, in uh, sometimes bad habits, sometimes good habits. We seek it in service, in recognition, in all those things, but we will only find that true love and belonging and that intimacy in relationship with you. Yes, Father, we get it by knowing you through your word, but not just as a book to gain more knowledge, but to know your heart to know who you are, to allow your Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and transform us. I pray, Father, for the ones here today who know a lot about you, but are saying, I'm not sure I have that relationship. Father, all they need to do is ask you. And just as we had the rain pouring down this morning, you will rain down your Holy Spirit into their hearts and into their lives and fill them with love and joy and peace that is beyond our human understanding. And you will not go away. You will stay there with us. We praise you for that today, Father. Make it true for each one of us that we will grab hold of the relationship that you desire with each one of us. It's what Jesus Christ died for. And it's in his name.